what do we do with the Browns now? I had initially vaulted them into the top five of my power rankings following their massive win over the Baltimore Ravens, but then news dropped on Wednesday morning that Deshaun Watson will miss the rest of the season because of a broken bone in his shoulder. Now, this is a very good roster. This team has shown they can win games with lackluster quarterback play. They beat the 49ers without Deshaun Watson, but their Super Bowl upside really relied on Deshaun Watson getting back to where he was in Houston, or at least close to it. And in that second half against the Ravens, after he suffered this injury, we saw flashes of that. We saw him play very well in that win, and it kind of looked like maybe this was a turning point for the Browns. Now they're going to have to turn to Dorian Thompson-Robinson, the rookie out of UCLA, who did not look ready when he got his first start back in week four against the Ravens, ironically. They had turned to P.J. Walker, but I mean, P.J. Walker hadn't been doing a ton either, so I guess it makes sense to see what DTR can do, but this is a really tough blow for a team that had a big win, a a kind of defining win, a season-defining win, and now they're back to the drawing board at quarterback, and we'll have to see what happens. Like I said, this team has proven they can win without you know stellar quarterback play, but it's going to be a tough road the rest of the way. As for the team they beat, the Baltimore Ravens, they have to find a way to close games in the fourth quarter. All three of their losses are games where they had a high win expectancy at some point in the fourth quarter. Even their win against the Arizona Cardinals, they couldn't really put that team away. They they gave up some late scores that made that game closer than it otherwise should be. They actually have a negative point differential in the fourth quarter, which is not what you would expect out of a team that is rightfully considered one of the best in the NFL. That is something they will have to fix as they move forward if they want to be real contenders for the Super Bowl. Also in the same division, we had the Bengals losing to the Houston Texans and the outstanding rookie C.J. Stroud, who's rightfully getting some MVP buzz coming out of that performance. Yet another game-winning drive for the rookie. As for the Bengals, this isn't a bad loss. The Houston Texans are good. That Panthers loss the Texans had is still unbelievable. But aside from that, they've played very well and CJ Stroud is obviously playing very well. And so losing to the Texans on its own is not a big deal, but this is the issue with a team starting one and three. Their margin for error is so small, especially in the AFC and how loaded the AFC is that this loss, now they get the Bengals this week, all of that kind of compounds to make it a tough road for them to the playoffs. They can obviously still make it. They're right there in the hunt, but they have to run pure the rest of the way. And that's you know, that's hard to do. You end up with injuries. Jamar Chase has a back injury or T Higgins misses time. He's going to miss that Ravens game as well. And you end up with losses. And so starting one and three removes your margin for error. The Bengals have absolutely no margin of error left. And it'll be interesting to see kind of where they end up at the end of the season. Finally, I mean, the Buffalo Bills, they ended up firing their coach, their offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey. The Bills offense had issues. There's no doubt about that. They had become somewhat predictable. They had not been as good following the Dawson Knox injury when they moved more towards 11 personnel. They do not have the wide receivers they need behind Stefan Diggs to really make that work. We saw Josh Allen struggle with turnovers as he has for many years, but that offense was still good. That offense was still a top five offense by any metric that you would like to use. They were not the issue here. The defense in Buffalo is still the issue. It has been an issue since they lost all of their big stars, including Tredavious White and Matt Milano, to injury. The defense is the one that gave up the pass interference penalty on an ill-advised all-out blitz late against the Broncos to set up the field goal. The special teams unit is the one that had 12 men on the field on a play that would have won the game for the Bills because the Broncos uh, missed a field goal attempt to win that game. None of that was Ken Dorsey's fault. So the issues that were there with the Bills, perhaps we see perhaps we see a little bit better on offense. Perhaps we see Joe Brady make things a little bit easier for Josh Allen, and we see maybe a few fewer turnovers, which would definitely help. But those issues on defense and those overall coaching decisions, those issues still remain. And this team is outside of the playoff hunt right now. They have, you know, some few tough games left down the stretch. It's going to be interesting to see both this team and like the Bengals, the Bengals, who's going to come out of this AFC with a playoff berth. I mean, 
the Bills and Bengals both could miss the playoffs, which at the beginning of season, that would have been been a wild thing to say. Coming up this week, we have a massive game between the Eagles and the Chiefs, a Super Bowl rematch on Monday night. I'll be excited to write about that next week when I do my power rankings. Head over to Sharp Football Analysis now, and you can read my power rankings for this week. 